Hello, welcome back to my bench. Today we've got another piece of equipment from a radio station and lots of other places, that's for sure. This one is a Crown D60. It's a amplifier, that's all it is. Little two channel, left right, I guess, stereo amplifier. Um, these things are everywhere, they've been around for I don't even know how long. Um, and this particular one has been in service ever since I can remember at one of my stations. It's just, it's been in the rack and it played music on hold on this channel and the, uh, the station, whichever station you had just selected out in the hallways on this channel. And it sat there and ran and ran and ran forever. The guy gave it to me to fix, and he said that after a while, it's distorted. So we're going to find out uh, what he's saying. I've got, I have 1,000 hertz. That says 10,000. I love the way this thing comes up. It's not 10,000. It's 1,000. And um, on this on one channel, and I've got the same thing on the other channel. Let's um let's see if I can how do I zoom this thing out? It's it is not locked. No, that's not right. Go to this side. Didn't plan this very well. Okay, here we go. So I've got ten thousand on one and we'll have a thousand on the other. Okay, there we go. And one volt, not ten volts input all right and uh, we'll see how it works now um that should be okay so let's turn it on it does hum a little bit but they always did and yep it's on there's one channel that's the left channel and there's the right channel let's uh just take this down. 400. Okay. Well, it sounds okay, but that is an awful lot of level to be sending in for having to turn this thing up this high. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm not going to sit here and just let it run for hours. Uh... I have a feeling I know what's wrong with it, and we're going to open it up and find out. So, let's unplug everything from back here, turn it off. Fortunately, the inputs, uh, or outputs rather, are the standard sized plugs. That's neat. I like it. And, uh, let's see, how do you get it open? Well, it has four... Four screws on this side. I, it's been a very long time since I worked on one of these. Like, years. They just don't generally go bad. Alright, so we got a couple of those. Oh, <laughs> and that one's different. So the two in the back are different from the two in the front. Okay. The same way on this side. Yeah, it is. That's just a regular machine screw. The other ones are... look like almost like wood screws how about you yeah they're not self tappers they're just regular hmm okay interesting and yeah there we go we're off 
on the power supply over here so I don't have to worry about it. All right, let's take a look. Well, these things are interesting. Big old pancake-style transformer. A little bit loose on the on the um, you know on the metal going through it. That's why it, probably why it hums. A couple of big 7,000 microfarad 40 volt Mallory's. I doubt if those are bad. I don't think I've ever seen them bad. And then we got a uh, a board. And the board has well, looks like it's got a bunch of capacitors on it. Let's take a look at the uh, schematic on this thing. Um, here it is. So, what we got here? We got going in, into an amplifier, out of the amplifier. This is just one one side. Um, through a buffer, I guess, transistor. Um, and then, interesting. So basically, it just amplifier, a little bit of feedback. Some, okay, well, not much. I mean, it's just pretty basic amplifier in here. That's all it is. What is the, what's the chip? Can we read it? I see one. First channel, second channel. Um, well, it gives a nice picture of it everywhere, but it doesn't say what it is. Okay. All right. Well, what I'm thinking here is we're going to have to check all these caps and find out what the caps are. Because, like I said, this thing has been in service forever sitting in a rack. So, how... seem to remember something about these. Um, uh, yep, 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 yep. I remember now. Okay. These and these come out, and I believe this whole plate comes off. Like I said, it has been a long time since I've worked on one of these guys. Okay. One thing you always got to do is you got to check, yep, you got to check your screws when you take them out. These are shorter. And they're shorter because they don't go through. They're in, they're in little, they're contained. They don't go all the way through like these do. What about these guys? Short. Short. Short, short, oh, and short. Somebody's been in here before. Okay, all three shorts. Okay, all of those are short, too. And then, I think, yeah, there we go. Yeah, you can see, you can see this thing's been in service. I mean, it's even a little bit discolored just from being around there. All right, so now we can get to these guys. What does that chip say? It says UA Wow. The glasses are so dirty I can't see it. U6 A7739 Three nine three, whatever. It's just a dual amplifier. <laughs> okay. Well, the first thing we got to do is we got to check, check our caps. I mean, that's first and always because um, these old Mallory's. Sometimes you know. Uh. So I gotta turn on some turn on some stuff here. Let's see. So that would be number one. Yep, I'll turn that on. 
Okay. And uh, we'll wait for that to hot up a little bit. Turn on the regular. And uh, I'll be back in a minute. Okay. Uh, I'm back. And the uh, solder sucker is warmed up. In case you're wondering, um, I don't know if I've said this before, but I, um, a long time ago, I took a Raspberry Pi 1 and um, built a controller for eight AC outlets, and the, uh, the things worked forever. I used it on things that low, low inputs, and uh, it's got a little Wi-Fi connector in there, and it's connected to my local Wi-Fi, and um, I can control eight different things, like the lights. <laughs> That's too much. And uh, those are LEDs, so they don't draw much. And a couple other things on my bench. Um, in case you ever see me start it up, that's what it is. It sits back there in the back. I can't even see it anymore. It has one flaw. <clears throat> when you first turn it on, the, uh, uh, like, power it up, the, um, it comes up. So the first time you address it across the net, it turns everything on all at the same time. So you got to go back through and turn them all off. <laughs> I've never quite figured out why that happens, but it does, and it doesn't bother me much because it hardly ever goes off. But it just sits there running all the time. Uh, let's see. So what do we got? Let's um, take a look at the manual again and find out which ones we want to look at. So the first ones, let's see. Okay. So the input comes in here, goes across a C1, which is 25 microfarads, I guess, 15 volts, non-polarized, and that would be, um, yeah, okay, that would be right here. It says in. <laughs> right there so these capacitors would be there so let's everything is off I'm just shorting out the caps I can see where they're at okay no voltage this uh, you do not want to put a voltage across these uh, these things ever. Uh, it evidently takes them right out, <clears throat> and I don't really want to do that. All right, let's zero it out, and we'll check this capacitor. Hmm. Now it's working. Well, that one is no good or way high let's see here's this one that one is 88 Ooh, 88 ohms uh, there's another capacitor here's one here that one is way high there appears to be another one that one is 9.8 ohms they got little plus markings on here on the board I can see where the caps are. Uh, here's another one. 51 ohms. Here is 17. Okay, well, um, I'm going to say, yeah, the caps are all bad. <laughs> Let's take one out here and find out. That would be th this right here. Wow. So this is this is right off of the input. So this is C1 or whatever channel it is. It doesn't give you on the manual. It doesn't give you the other side, just one side. All right. Well, let's check it out 
see what it says. It's uh, 25 microfarads. Non-polarized. Yeah, yeah, that's on the 200 microfarad scale. Yeah, right, okay. 0 0.01. So it's saying 13.3 nanofarads. Yeah, no, that's... That's not going to get it. Let's look at the other one over here. And it is right here. Would this show 55, something like that? As a... Series resistance, 1.2 microfarads. Wow, okay. Well, let me see. Hang on, let's see if I can find capacitors. 25. Okay, so I don't have... And these are non-polarized. I don't believe I got any non-polarized 25s or 22s. No. What, what do I have around here? Hang on. Give me a minute. Huh. Okay, well, I, I can't find any. Um, uh, 25s or anything non-polarized. Uh, and these guys are, uh, 25 at 15. So, we're just going to stick in for now. Um, a couple of 25s or 22 at 50s. Um... Polarized. The only reason they use um, non-polarized caps, or usually the only reason they use them, is because they have a much, much better frequency response. But 25 microfarads is going to pass just about everything anyway. I, I, I don't know. Anyway, so uh, the red inputs are up on this end, so we'll put that as the plus. I don't think it's going to make a hill of beans difference, to tell you the truth. But we'll find out. Before I send this back, I'll get the, uh, I'll get, find some correct ones. I mean, this thing is pretty good amplifier but boy I'm glad December <clears throat> December 1st I'm going to get new glasses or somewhere around December 1st I'm going to get new glasses and I'll be really glad to do that yeah the pad sort of came off with this Yeah, it did. All right. See you. Just broke right off. Well, there's plenty of room there. So, we'll just put this one over here. Right. 
solder these in. Okay, make sure I didn't short anything out there. Nope. Okay. And that one's already cut off. All right, so there's two we found that are bad. Uh, what do we got next? This one here, it said it was bad too. This one is polarized to begin with. Let's see what it says. Yeah, and it's marked plus up there. See you. Um, just for fun. Let's do this. Zero. And hook it up. Um, you actually have to touch the leads. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's saying way over. It's higher than this thing will read for resistance. And this one is supposed to be what? 5 at 30? It's, yeah, 160 nanofarads. What does this one do? Uh, comes right off of pin 8. Pin 7 comes right off of pin 7. So let's look at the manual. Pin 7. That is what? Minus? Yeah. Minus supply, I think. What does this say? Pin. So, wow, two, three, four. I guess that's a seven. Yeah, it says V minus. See you. And it is a bypass cap. All right, so five at 30. How about 4.7 at 50? Well, plenty of room. 4.7 at 100. Yeah, 4.7 at 100 plus comes to this end. I'm doing this video real time minus the um, <laughs> my, minus the cutouts to go find stuff. All right. So we sucked out this other capacitor here. Sorry about the 4.7 for a hundred microfarad. Now that's a little high. I wonder if this one's the same way. It's the same, but on the other side. So it's exactly the same, only different. This one would be, where would this be? Nothing's actually marked on the board, but these are 112. See you. Where would they be? Let's see, that one up there is 10 at 50, so that isn't right. Um, hello? 
Can you see it? I don't see it. It would be right in the middle of all this stuff someplace. So where does it go? One end of it goes to pin 6. So the negative end goes to pin 6. Right, there it is. Right there. Uh, goes between pin 6 and pin 5, the two inputs. All right, that leaves us two more. And these are the output caps. Okay. So, forgot to take you back, but basically I put in two of these guys here. Um, they are 100 at, 100 at 16, and the only ones we got left now are the output caps back here. And those are, what? Uh, 10 at 50. They're not outputs. They're, yeah. Okay, so the output, interesting. So let me show you again here. I'll try to remember to take it off. So these uh, are right here. These 10 at 50 back here. So they're not actually output caps. They're part of the part of the feedback. The output, if you look, has a 2.7 ohm 1 watt resistor directly to the output and a 3 micro Henry choke. So there, yeah, so it's a direct output right back here. Okay, so basically, the output comes from back here with wires leading it up to the front. And here's your output transistors, which would be Q11 and Q12 uh, and push, push. Okay, so what we're looking at... In, on these these uh, 10 at 50s is just part of the feedback circuit. But I'll bet you, considering they got 30 volts on them, I'll bet you they're trash. And... Boy, these, these are healthy. healthy legs on these things okay and these are marked also yeah plus goes over there and we'll see what this says just for capacitance first it's uh, 10 at 50 it says and it's saying about 14 so it's 50% high almost. In this particular case, that could be uh, a lot. And 16 ohms, that's way too high for, for a 10. Uh, let's check the other one. Try this guy first. That says what, 11 ohms? And what we got here? Wow, 15. So this one is 50% high. All right, so we need what? 10 at 50? What do we got here? There's 10 at 50. 10 at 50. Yeah, all these, these caps 
that I have. It's just a, I went out and just bought a ton of them. And they're all, um, most all of these are Panasonic's, except for some other ones. I don't, I don't buy, well, I do have, I got a whole thing of cheap, cheap, cheap ones over there that, that I use for my own junk and playing around. But I try to get better quality caps. No, I do get better quality caps for people when I'm doing work for them. Mostly because I don't want to see the thing come back. Alright. Whoops. Hmm. Went to pull on it and didn't pull. It got wrapped around itself. Alrighty. Since I didn't hear any hum in it at all, I'm taking these 7,000 Mallory's as being okay. Uh, I'm just gonna. <laughs> Alright, so we got our caps in. Let's give it a shot now and see if we got a little bit better response here out of it. Because these guys, these inputs were, one was completely open. I mean, what was no cap at all there. All right, so let's see which one I got. That's B. That's A. Output, lumpy, bumpy side goes down. Want to make sure you get these correct. All right. Well, light bulb on, power on, turn it on. Okay. Something's wrong with this side. Did I not get you soldered on there? Excuse me. What did I do wrong? I really need new glasses. It looks all right to me. There we go. Oh yeah. That's a lot more output than I had before. With the inputs. So. Let us see. Let's take. Take the output here and plug it into the distortion analyzer. Let it warm up for just a second. And I'll be back when that's warmed up. Hang on. Okay. I'm back and the um, distortion analyzer is warmed up. First off, I want to tell you folks, this is not the right way to do this, okay? Um... The distortion analyzer is 600 ohm input. This thing has 2.7 ohms output. Um, and a 0.1 capacitor between the input and the, out and the ground. So it's going to make its own 2.7 ohms anyway. Um, added on top of the 600. But it will let me at least check and see if it um if it's distorted we'll we'll do it right here in a minute but i just want to check and make sure that what i put in here didn't make any difference so i'm going to do this at a thousand ohms because that's what i'm set up for and we'll use my phone to take a picture here we've got to set this up first of all for 
um, set level on the set. Whoops. It would probably help if I hit the record. Okay. So we're going to set this to set level with uh, this thing up here. Uh, we're on a thousand, right around a thousand. We'll feed it a little bit of juice, just enough to get it to the set level, which is there. Then we take it back over to distortion, crank this down, well, and then we do what's called balancing over here to the lowest, and then you do your frequency adjust to the lowest you can get it. It's really touchy. Then bring it down a little more. And I am on 0.3% uh, full scale. So now we readjust our balance. And we're down about 0.125, somewhere around there. So that's really good. Um, it's not, it is not distorted. However, like I said, this is not going into a um, into an 8 ohm load, so we're going to do it another way. All right, and let me get my board here. Turn you down, get you off of here. Here's my my little board. We're going to take the output of this. Mm, just balance it there. That's good. Um, this guy. And find one of that type of connector. What did I do with them? And up here, yep, here we go. So I got this guy here. I could crank him around about eight ohms. This one I set up to be. Well, I thought I did. No, nope, guess not. Okay. <clears throat> I made this thing a long time ago. It ain't perfect. Clip leads. I got to readjust these, I guess, someday. But for right now, they're fine. Um, there, and there. Everybody just sit. Okay, we're off. You're on 8 ohms approximately. Um, turn on the scope. I can't use my on-screen scope because I lost... With the latest Windows update, I lost an entire USB port. So I'm going to have to just take pictures with my phone on this. Onto my uh, other scope. And we're just going to clip across it. Yeah, somehow. Boy, this is janky. All right. Um, what am I on? Channel 1. All right. So, I'm on channel 1. We got output out of the right channel. So, 
Let's do this. I'm recording. Taking it up. What are we looking at? Half a volt. There we go. We're into an 8 ohm load now. Ooh, clean that pot a little. Yeah, I can hear it. I can hear it talking to me. That looks pretty good. I would say that's pretty good because we're on what? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 volts peak to peak. Yep. That looks just about fine. Anyhow, I'm going to let this sit here and run. And clean that pot some. All right, I'm going to let this sit here and run. And uh, I'll bring you back after, after a while to, uh, to see what it looks like. So it's been an hour, um, and let's take a look at, there it is, still working, clean the pot, no distortion, no noise. Looks pretty good to me. Alright. Well, I'd say that that's working fine. He did say mostly on left channel. But I believe that it's on both channels. Um, I'll hook this thing up to the other channel for a while and let it go. But I, I can guarantee you it was all those bad caps that were <clears throat> in this thing. So, anywho. We're going to put it back together and put it on the burn-in bench. Hooked up to this thing so it'll get nice and warm on both channels and let it run for 24 hours and make sure that it's not distorted and everything will be fine. Anyhow, there you go. Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget, if you uh, want to support me over on Patreon, uh, AERV blog on Patreon, um, and uh, start a conversation down below if uh, you want to talk about these things. So. Hey, thanks for watching, and uh, till next time.